Hello and welcome to Quick and Nerdy, an MSP friendly channel dedicated to Veeam powered solutions for BAS and DRAS offerings. As always, I'm your host, Brandon McCoy, technical advisor for North America, supporting our Veeam cloud and service provider community. And today, we are talking about Veeam Cloud Connect. In this video, we're going to discuss what it is, why you need it, and how to get it set up. Now, this video does dovetail into another video on the Veeam Service Provider Console. So if you are looking to set that product up, you want to watch at least half of this video first. So the pieces of the puzzle. In order to use Cloud Connect, you're going to need a Veeam Backup and Replication Server, which as you'll see, is a Cloud Connect server. We're also going to need a Veeam Cloud Connect Gateway. You may even have multiple Cloud Connect Gateways. And those are the only two pieces that you need if you're simply trying to use the service provider console for single pane of glass and some job management. However, if you're also looking to offer backup as a service and or disaster recovery as a service, you'll want to watch the rest of this video in order to learn how to position your storage or your infrastructure for backup as a service in DR. Now, once we get into the demo lab, we're going to see all of the steps and the pieces, but I've broken it down into these three core concepts. So the first thing on the left is the cloud gateway. Now, the cloud gateway is something that is installed on a Windows machine, and it is actually a Veeam-powered service. So the cloud gateway is what connects all of your customers to your Cloud Connect server and or your infrastructure from across the internet without a VPN. The cloud gateway can be installed on one or multiple machines. It can be on a dedicated Windows machine, or it can also live on something like the Cloud Connect server, which is the second piece in the middle here. So Cloud Connect is a license that gets installed on a Veeam backup and replication instance, and it turns the Veeam backup and replication into a Cloud Connect server. This also changes the functionality. So while Veeam backup and replication for a customer is used to do backups, to do restores, the Cloud Connect allows it to instead be used to deploy the cloud gateways, to add customers and tenants, as well as to provision resources for backup and DR. Well, speaking of which, the backup and the DR piece is the third component. So if you are offering uh, Cloud Connect backup, Cloud Connect replication, you'll also want to position your storage. And your storage can be an on-prem disk like a NAS, a SAN. It could also be the Veeam backup and replication server, or maybe it's even some sort of object storage like Wasabi, Azure Blob, Backblaze, AWS, etc. Those are the three main components, and now we're going to jump right into the lab and see how it is deployed at a high level. Here we are in the Veeam demo lab, and I've got an instance of Veeam Backup and Replication version 12 opened up. The only difference between what we call Cloud Connect Server and a Veeam Backup and Replication Server is the license and thus the functionality. So from the top here, I've got a license that says Cloud Connect Provider equals yes. You can also look at the actual license file extension and it'll say Veeam Backup and Replication Enterprise Plus dot VCSP. The dot VCSP is for Veeam Cloud Service Providers and is the license you need for Cloud Connect functionality. The license applied opens up this tab down here on the bottom left called Cloud Connect and now I'm able to do service provider functionality that a customer would not be able to. Conversely, you cannot do standard backup functionality from a Cloud Connect server, and you can only have one license on a Veeam server. So a Cloud Connect server can deploy gateways, position infrastructure like backup repositories and hosts for disaster recovery, as well as instant VM recovery for customer backups as of version 12. All other functionality must be done from a regular Veeam backup server. Now the first thing I'm going to do with my Cloud Connect server is install an SSL certificate. So Veeam can generate a self-signed certificate for you, but we do recommend that you purchase a 
trusted authority certificate from a GoDaddy or use an existing wildcard certificate. In this scenario, I've already generated a self-signed certificate from Veeam strictly for demo purposes. However, if I wanted to implement my certificate, I would choose one of the other options here. More information about SSL certificates can be found on the Cloud Connect reference architecture, which is linked in the video description below. Now, once I've got my SSL certificate, the next thing to do is add the role of Cloud Gateway. Now, the Cloud Gateway can be any Windows 64-bit OS in your environment, and you can have more than one of them. Having multiple gateways allowed for, allows for load balancing with round-robin DNS. However, you can also use your existing Cloud Connect server as the gateway. And if you're only using Cloud Connect for service provider console functionality, and you're not doing the traditional backup and disaster recovery as a service, an all-in-one Windows machine is sometimes uh, the most efficient. Now, this server does need to be reached over port 6180 from the outside world. Now, you can change this port to something like 443 if you'd like, but all of the customer products are defaulted to this port in the GUI. This next step, we're going to enter in the networking information for your Cloud Connect gateway. Now, Veeam recommends an external DNS, and you may also want to have multiple cloud gateways for high availability and load balancing via round robin DNS. So say you have two Cloud Connect gateways on two separate Windows machines with two separate IP addresses, but both of those IP addresses resolve to the same A record. In that scenario, Veeam will connect to whatever the external DNS is and make a list of all the gateways available and automatically choose a gateway based on availability and load. You can also have something called Cloud Gateway Pools. And a Cloud Gateway Pool allows you to specify that a specific customer only use a specific or dedicated Cloud Gateway. So let's say that the Cloud Gateway address is going to be cloudveeam.com. I would enter that DNS in here and next, next, finish through the process. Veeam is going to install the services needed onto this gateway. Now under the hood, this is a network encrypted tunnel referred to as TLS or Transport Layer Security 1.2 and of course with the SSL certificate on the other side to authenticate against connections. I've got my cloud gateway here and I've already got my certificate. Another thing I may want to do is add in repositories. So at this step, we've got our Cloud Connect and we've got our connectivity. So if you're only using this for Service Provider Console, you can stop this video and head on over to the Service Provider. However, if you're also leveraging Backup as a Service and DR as a Service, you'll want to come in and add your Cloud Repositories. So just like a customer Veeam server, you're just going to add your repository in here. So maybe object storage with something like Wasabi or S3. And then, of course, you've got your disk-based storage. So maybe you've got a NAS, a Windows Linux server, or you're using the Veeam server itself. Here I've got three different repositories. And I'm going to create some tenants in another video and give them some storage so that when a customer connects to my Cloud Connect, they will see backup resources available to them. Lastly, we're going to talk about hardware plans and Cloud Connect replication. So under my inventory tab, I've got virtual infrastructure and I've added in my vCenter environment. I could also do Hyper-V and then customers can replicate their virtual machines one-to-one -one into my data center and I could offer them disaster recovery as a service with push button failover. Now the hardware plans are a little outside the scope of this. There will be another video specific to replication, the networking, full site and partial site failover. But for now, this should give you a good understanding of the basic building blocks for your Cloud Connect. Now the last item here is to add a tenant into your Cloud Connect environment. However, instead of doing this here, we're actually going to do it from the service provider console and show you how to connect the customer Veeam server to your service provider console and Cloud Connect at the same time.
That's it for this video on Cloud Connect Quick Start. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on veeming in the free world.